soon as the wheat shipment arrives, a grain probe vacuums up samples from throughout the load. If the samples pass quality inspection, the mill gives the truck the go-ahead to dump the wheat to an underground conveyor. From there, the grain goes into a cleaning machine where a system of sieves removes impurities such as straws, sticks and grain dust. The wheat then goes into storage silos until milling time. The protein content of wheat varies by species, so the first step is to blend together the right varieties of wheat for the type of flour they'll be making. From the blender, the wheat goes through a second, more intensive cleaning system that removes the tiniest of impurities, such as weed seeds and dust. On the way to the milling machines, a scale tracks production quantities. This mill's vertical production line is five stories high. Gravity carries the wheat downward through a succession of milling machines. Each one grinds the grain between steel rollers, then sifts it. Particles too large to pass through a sieve continue downward into the next milling machine and so on. By the last machine, whatever's still not fully processed gets vacuumed up to the top to begin the cycle again. Mills make white flour by grinding only the wheat kernel's soft inner part, called the endosperm. This requires removing the bran, the kernel's hard skin, and the germ, its seed. That separation begins as soon as the wheat kernels enter the very first milling machine. Rollers break off the germ and bran and crush the endosperm into pieces called semolina. Sifting removes the germ and loose bran pieces, but much of the semolina remains covered in bran particles. So between each milling station is a purifier, a machine that uses controlled air currents to float the lighter bran above the heavier semolina, enabling sieves to separate the two components. The semolina goes through repeated grind, sift and purify cycles until it's completely clean. Only then can it be finely ground into flour. The ground semolina passes through a series of sieves. This ensures it doesn't leave the final milling machine until it's been ground to just the right powdery texture. There are three main types of white wheat flour. Bread flour has high protein, enabling dough to rise well and bake to a firm texture. Cake flour has low protein, which produces a crumbly texture. All-purpose flour is the compromise. Its medium protein content makes it suitable for baking both bread and cakes. By the end of production, the flour mill has produced three distinct products. Bran, used for animal feed and baking. White wheat flour, of course. And wheat germ for the health food market. Leftover byproducts go into livestock feed. In the mill's quality control lab, they bake the product for which the flour is designed, then examine its appearance, texture, and taste. They use specialized equipment to calculate the volume, the density, the protein, and moisture contents. With baked goods destined for retail sale, like these cookies, it's especially important to measure the dimensions. If the dough overexpands, the cookies won't fit in their package. Just prior to packaging, the mill enriches its white flour with vitamins and minerals. This replaces the vitamins and minerals lost when the milling process removed the bran and germ. They shake the bags to settle the flour. Bagged flour in various sizes goes out to supermarkets, restaurants, and commercial bakeries, while tanker trucks ship bulk flour to large industrial bakeries.